Now we're going to cover spatial measures of dispersion. And just like the aspatial measures of dispersion, range, variance, and standard deviation, we can calculate or we can create spatial analogs of these measures. Spatial measures of dispersion indicate the concentration or dispersion of a point distribution about its mean center. So both of these point distributions have the same mean, but you can see that the dispersion around the mean in this case is much, much smaller than the dispersion around the mean in that case. So right away we can see some, some analogs to, uh, to a spatial case, to a spatial dispersion measures. What about the range? The range in a spatial case is just the, the, the maximum difference between the highest and the lowest point and the most left and the most right point. So the range in this case is going to be the maximum x-coordinate minus the minimum x-coordinate, or the distance between the leftmost point and the rightmost point. And the vertical dimension of the range is simply going to be the distance between the northernmost point and the most bottom point, this distance over here. So in, in other words, the range, we can have a range in the x equals to x max minus x min. And we can have a range in the y dimension, too, equal to y max minus y min. While range is quite easy to calculate, by and large, people like to talk about the dispersion of point distributions using something called the distance, the standard distance, which measures the degree to which points are concentrated or dispersed around the mean center. This represents the standard deviation of the distance of each point from the mean center. If we look at the formula up top, we see that the left-hand side here is the sum of the square distances to the mean center in the x direction. And this is the sum of the square distances in the y direction. When we simply sum those two sums together and divide by n and take the square root, we get the standard distance. Let's work one out together. Here we have a point distribution consisting of five points. We know their x and y di dimension. The first thing that we need to do is calculate the mean center because we're going to have to calculate these two sums that rely on the mean center. So the mean center along the x's is just the sum of the x's divided by n. So we have 5, 10, 14 over 5. And the mean center of the y is 5, 10, 13 over 5. And when the next step will be to calculate xi minus xc bar and yi minus yc bar. So we're just going to subtract the xc from each of the x's in this column. We're going to subtract the yc from each of the y's in this column. So here we would have minus 0, we have 0 minus 14 over 5, which by the way is 2.8. So we have minus 2.8. For the next row down we have 2 minus 2.8. So we have 0 minus 0.8. 3 minus 2.8, 0 0.2, and so on. We can do the y's as well. We have 13 over 5, which is 2 and 3 fifths, which is 2.6. We have 3 minus 2.6, 0 0.4. 2 minus 2.6, minus 0 0.6, and so on. I've got them all filled out already on the next sheet. So here we are with our filled out values for the insides of these brackets. 
The next step is that we need to square each of these values. And we can do that simply by squaring each of these values. So in the first case, we have 2.8 squared, which is going to be 8 point something. I've got the numbers on the next sheet. We've got uh, 0.4 squared, which is going to be 0 0.016. And we can do that for each of these values. And here they are. So the next step is to find the sum of xi minus xc squared. So here we have all of our xi minus xc squares. We just need to add them up and find the sum. And similarly, we need to find the sum of the yi minus yc squares. So we need to find that sum. And I'm not going to do it by hand, but this is roughly 8, 12, I don't know, around 14. And this one is roughly 2, 4 and a half, about 5 and a half. So the true answers are 14.8 and 5.2. So now we found everything, now we have everything we need to calculate the standard distance. We put 14.8 into that location as the sum of the deviances in the x dimension, and we have 5.2 as the sum of the square deviances is in the y direction. So SD is equal to the square root of 14.8 plus 5.2 all over 5. 14.8 plus 5.2 is 20. So we have the square root of 4, that's 20 over 5, and that equals 2. So the standard distance equals 2. S sub D equals 2. What that means is on average, points are about 2 distance units away from the mean center. Here we are with the point distribution and the mean center. And in order to illustrate the standard distance, we are going to draw a circle with its origin at the mean center having a radius of the standard distance. So here's the circle, and the length of this radius is equal to the standard distance. So the length of that radius is 2. And this circle tells us, in general, how far away the points are from the mean center. Imagine we had this distribution of points. So let me go back. You can see that especially this point has been moved out to the one of the extremities over here. What do you think the mean center of this distribution will look like? Well, rather than work it all out, let's just go through the slides quickly. You can pause at any moment if you don't understand what we are doing, but it, we're just repeating the same process, calculating the sum of the squared deviations and then putting that into the formula to find a standard distance of 3.2. Now, if we were to draw the circle around, the standard distance circle around the mean center, we see that it's a circle with a much larger radius. And that's because, on average, points are farther away than they were before from the mean center. Going back to the original case, here's the mean center with a standard distance of 2, and here's the standard distance of 3.1.